Hey everybody, welcome back. Hey Greg. Well, we um, had a bit of a... Fortunately it wasn't what I was fearing, but uh, we had a little bit of a wildlife event. Uh, one of the wildling cats brought in a, um, a rabbit kitten, or a, a teenage rabbit for that matter. And fortunately it was not harmed, so I just took it back out to the field and released it. Uh, they're not so much of a pest here that I need to cull them or anything like that. Uh, they're awfully cute little things. We get them, they can they come in different colours around here too. They We sometimes see them in pink rather than the usual brown or whatever. So, yeah, so that's what happened. Um, Alita wasn't able to... Uh, basically, basically, the reason why I jumped up so quickly though is because I didn't know what was going on. I saw Alita holding a towel to her hands and struggling with the door with a panicked look on her face. Um, I was worried that maybe well, it was a couple of things. One, that she'd cut herself badly because I've ex we've experienced that before. Uh, the second was that one of the cats had decided to um, spack out and leap out of her hands and shred her hands up from their claws. We've actually had that happen as well. Or, or something else. So, you know, I was my primary concern was to get off the stream and go find out what was going on. Fortunately, in this particular instance, you know, it was the um, little rabbit kitten, so that's, we were able to you know, manage that situation quite fine. But I didn't want to sit here and ask a thousand questions when my wife's got a concerned look on her face and with the towel in her hands and things clutching it pretty hard, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to assume the worst here. So particularly because we have, I have experienced things in the past where rapid action is required. Yeah, DJ Craze, we, they are definitely a introduced species that is not wanted. Fortunately, they're kept in check pretty good around here. And I was in no mood to cull them or anything like that at this point. <sighs> okay, so we've got our two corner alignment installations. We then put on our stencil, no tape, nothing. Now, I do realize I still haven't found my little tube of 35 mil bullet. You know what I might do is actually empty out another tube that I have, which I say don't use as much. Oh, I just found my 35s. Jeez, you know, the number of times that happens in life where you're basically giving up on looking for something because you're like, ah, oh, you know, I'll just go do something and it turns up. So there we go. We've got my 35s. Yeah, so we've got our point three fives finally. And to make the process of getting the balls in there easy, we use just a couple of drops of IPA. It doesn't really matter. Spill out our rough estimate, something like that. There's probably a few too many, but hey, we've got a quarter of a million of them. And you just, you know, gently rub, 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 and all those little spots get filled, and then you just swipe off the excess. Okay, so now all of those balls are installed, we do the preheat phase. I'm still not used to it with the Aten, so this may go wonky, but we'll see. So I'm going to try it 330 and 40%, try our luck. There's a bit of junk in one of those holes, but that's okay. And we have the flux on the ready. So what we do is we heat this up. I oh, just, sorry, I've just got to intervene slightly. We've got to double up here. 
that there is sitting where one of the alignment ones already is. Okay, back to the heating. So we've got no flux there at this point. And we're just heating it up until the balls start to lose their shine, like they're starting to now. Okay, we don't want them to actually fully reflow. We get the flux. And we just, and that is a complete cluster. No, I'm going to have to redo that. wonder what went wrong there. It's almost like... Yeah, the temperature was wrong or something there. Okay, for those who have watched in the past, you know that normally when I put the flux over like that, you get maybe one, one ball come out. So I'm not sure why so many grabbed on this time. And this is where I was saying that I've got to get used to this atom. So maybe I need to drop the airflow down. Yeah, maybe that was too much airflow. And it was cooking the tops of them before the base was ready. This is why it is such a pain to change equipment. Because even if it seems like it's technically the same, there are all these little subtle variances that completely mess up what would otherwise perhaps be a very straightforward procedure. So I'm going to drop the airflow and see what happens. I think we actually managed to get them all back in. They are deformed now. Uh, you can see that they don't have that shine on them. So um, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to just go slow. I'm going down to 10% air. Just go slow. There's probably enough flux there now. But I'm worried that it's going to be clumped up in certain areas, so we may get some spit out, which is unfortunate. So yeah, I think what was happening is that with those settings... Okay, here we go, the reflow is happening without the spitting, so that's good. With those settings, it was cooking the tops too quickly without giving the SMC itself a chance to heat up. Okay, there's a couple that haven't jumped in, like up the top there. That's not a problem. We just let it cool down a little bit, and we just touch those ones. And it has two effects. One is that it stops it being spherical. The other is, of course, it you know, causes it to line up. And now when we hit it again, there's a pretty good chance they will rebind with the pad correctly. Okay, it looks like that one's going to make a freaking liar out of me. Okay, yep. Okay, that's good enough at this point. I'm worried about this ball up here, but I can take the stencil off and we can work on it directly. So we just lift the stencil off. It should be just a bit. Yeah. Initially when you do that, it looks like you've got a whole bunch of balls everywhere, but it's just the flux bubbles. Okay, so I see that one there is not sitting down properly, so that's okay. We can focus on that one directly now. Let's see if we can get it to sit down properly. And while we're doing this, all the others can actually re-centralize. Okay, for some reason that is really not liking that pad. There's a problem with that pad. That Hey Beepope, uh, this is the ST862, which is, I believe, pretty much what everybody's using. Alright, so what's wrong with this pad? I'm not really sure. Let's give it a little bit of a scratch up. Scratch, 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 scratch. Nothing too serious. Just enough to you know, give it a bit of a different surface.
you know, give it give that a chance to reconnect. I don't want to try and hold this. Okay, that's good. I don't want to try and hold that um, that ball while I reflow it because invariably I usually collide it with another one. So here goes. Okay, now that's gone in. So it just needed a little bit of a, a little bit of a scritchy scratchy. And it's good now. No, no, no. Do not need more flux, Arnold G. There's ample flux there. Heaps. Absolutely heaps. You put more flux on there and you're going to have balls just skirting all over the place. It just won't work. Trust me, I've done this many, many a time. I know what I'm doing when it comes to these SMC re-balls. Hey, Keith. Um, wildlife event. Okay, so all this is good now. And finally put that back on our board. Okay, so there's a fair bit of flux lying on the board here. I'm going to try and blow a bit of that off. Hey, Valgrind. You call yourself Valgrind because of the memory check software? Now, I don't want a lot of flux around on this SMC pad area. For me, it tends to cause more dramas than it doesn't. I often find if there's um, on the board when you put the SMC back down like I know some people seem to have a excellent mastery of reflowing uh, reflowing these SMC's back on with a lot of flux I don't know how they do it I, they're obviously very skilled at it but whenever I try to do it with a lot of the amount of flux that the other people use mine just swims away so I like to use a small amount of flux, make sure the pads are covered so that you don't oxidize while you're doing the reflow. I do drop the temperature a bit because we are reflowing leaded balls now rather than lead free. And we're just sort of waiting for that flux around the edge of the bowl. It hasn't quite sat in properly yet, this bottom part hasn't yet. You get a perimeter of flux going around the chip. There we go. And you see how it now swivels as I move the hot air around it. Yeah, you'll see when you're doing these reflows that flux is retracting now. But when you use a small amount of flux, it shows you what part of the chip is actually sitting down because it pushes out a small perimeter, uh, a small bead of flux around there. And then that's how you know that you've got, for starters, it's dropping. And then secondly, whether it's sitting level. Because what will happen, like I could see, it started up here and then it progressively came down the sides. And that's how I knew that the bottom would need some more heat because it wasn't yet sitting down. So I added a bit more heat and then it all came down nicely. Because here I am trying to sound very professional and you'll probably find it, <laughs> it doesn't even work. But... Yeah, well, you know, fake it till you make it, don't they say? So let's hope I've kind of made it. <sighs> I'm just very glad I found my vial of 35s. Because believe me, it's much easier to dispense them from this than it is from this. If I tried to dispense from this container, it's a train wreck. Absolute train wreck. Okay, just put it in there for a bit of cooling. 
by the way, there's no guarantee that that SMC is okay because we don't know what caused that resistor to lose its value and it may have had a knock-on effect to the SMC so this may not yet be over okay I think that's cool enough now cool yeah we may yet still have a damaged SMC but we're just trying with this one you know, save us having to use up another SMC that we don't have to. Okay, so we're 18 volts. Green light, we're good. That's a real cheesy green pool. Oh, that's great. So I actually think two things happened here. I think the ISL was definitely damaged because when we replaced the ISL, our communication lines came back up to being similar again. And then whatever it was also caused that R6995 to drop from 348 to 300K. I'm going to have to find out what are the possible... Um, mechanisms that can cause a resistor to reduce its value with this particular format like thin film actually I don't know if these are thin or thick film on these ones anyway I'll have to find out I'll ask some people I'll probably ask on Twitter and maybe someone like Dave Jones will actually know what's going on so um, yeah because it's a rare phenomena because most of the time we are used to seeing resistors going up in value when they're damaged but this is a case where if you didn't consider that as a possibility you would basically spend the whole night running around on the board and not finding a solution because you, know, you wouldn't think to check to see what happened actually that's not true chances are you would at some point check those resistors after you've changed the regulator and you've changed the ISL and you've changed the SMC and you're still getting no success I'm kind of curious if that might have worked without changing the resistor because it was 3.2 volts so that may have just slid under the threshold I'll slid through because like you do have your SMC um, you have your voltage uh, damn it what's that chip called uh, it's basically it's the chip that um, won't set the let the power through until the voltage is steady so I don't know what its actual threshold limits are anyway it may have worked then, but the thing is, it wouldn't have actually been quite correct, so it would have caused other weird issues. So, oh well. Perhaps it's a resistor mix. I don't know. It's, um, like I said, it's weird, and the only times I've ever encountered it, funnily enough, are on the 342 regulator. I haven't seen it anywhere else yet. It's not to say it hasn't happened anywhere else, but that is the only place that I have personally encountered it with the MacBooks. So anyway. Alright, that's it for me tonight. It's already half past twelve. I'm going to go and get myself um some yogurt and muesli or something like that. Something healthy to eat. And then I'm gonna watch the last thirty minutes of the last episode of the um Narcos Mexico season three and hopefully it'll be a satisfying ending, even though I already know what's gonna happen. So I'll catch all you later. You'll take care and see you next time.